Scorpios, welcome. This your singles read for November. Meet the soulmate, I call it. It's a purely predictive read. It should be for someone that you haven't met yet. Because it's for super singles, totally singles, completely singles. If there's someone on your mind, check out the heart spread read. Which should always be up on Thursdays for uh, Libras and Scorpios, but I'm a day behind. Forgive me. So, uh, this is eight cards. Uh, look at the emotional nature, uh, intellectual nature, call it, sexual love nature, and core values and lifestyle. I look at that as the four pillars uh, of a good relationship. Um, and I did uh, shuffle before I started, put a little energy on it here. Let's see what we got. It's a big time frame, November. I get out ahead of it a little bit here. It's. Uh, you know, the airport's uh, runways are clear. Your soulmate can land. I just want to meet them here. I'll tell you about them. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus energies in your chart are relevant here. Scorpio and Scorpio Venus, full disclosure. A lot of Sag, Cancer Moon. Uh, uh, Scorpio Venus, very strong for me. Conjunct Neptune. And the third. Yeah. Third house, Scorpio. All right, guys. What do we got for your person? This is their emotional nature. Five of Cups. It's an always positive read because it simply asks who's the right one for you. So it doesn't need to be triggery. Two of Swords. So their emotional nature is represented here by the Five of Cups and the Two of Swords. Let me look uh, at their intellectual nature for saving. King of Wands. In the page of Pentacles, Leo's son, um, Virgo, Mercury, Water, Moon, Five of Cups, and the Two of Swords. You know they did have a difficult childhood. This is uh, your person; they're not perfect. Um, certainly not invulnerable. Most of us seem to have a difficult childhood certainly seems to be the norm um, they may have had to make a choice or been part of a choice uh, between the mom and the dad could be the mom and the relatives the grandmother father the energy something like that um, I get the feeling like they spent uh, time in different households and there was uh, emotional um, energy about the way that they spent the time that had nothing to do with uh, working out reasonable schedules that were about accommodating this child and co-parenting the child, uh, some kind of a, a drama and a, a thing. So, you know, it's energy being kind of like a pawn in this kind of a childhood thing um, with the breakup with the little child usually ends up making them feel guilty like it's their fault somehow and you know this page in this particular deck I always say is the most uh, sincere page um, so let there be no doubt about this soulmate here Scorpio um, they are very sincere this is their mind this is their mercury energy it's in Virgo, the, which is modest, which is humble, which is sincere energy, Virgo. So, you know, to contrast with what you would think about Leo, which is well represented by this card. So, I'm guessing this is someone's going to come across like a Leo um, here. I think you might find they have a Pisces moon. If not Pisces moon, then a Cancer moon. It, it's the same kind of energy to me. Of, um, emotionally, they're really wounded by this childhood. But, you know, they have a naturally indomitable, strong spirit. I won't be surprised these strength cards show up somewhere. Um, and... Um, they probably have a way with this page of pentacles under the king of wands 
but being pretty grounded, like not, not they don't go overboard and become a bully or become a, a just purely egoistical um, and look at me type of Leo, look at me. Um, so there's like a, a calm assertiveness with the Page of Pentacles, King of Wands, Page of Pentacles. A calm assertiveness, as if, almost as if this Mercury exerts like a, a unusual amount of control over a sun, and you know um, the sun is the only house the sun rules. Fifth house is Leo, so you, you know the sun of all things. So um, there's a nice balance here, and it could be this moon. You know, have this Cancer moon, this Pisces moon. Um, uh, bringing this a uh, lot of emotional energy um, to this fifth house uh, sun energy let's look at their sexual nature here but I mean charismatic confident outspoken uh, they're going to be the one to speak first they're going to hold people's attention or you know they might talk over you a little bit be very animated um, you'll probably enjoy it though you know uh, they're probably going to be quite charming the way it mixes with this page of pentacles uh, do it in a way that's somehow disarming mm -hmm. now the hanging man so this is where they are sexually and with love energy with the hanging man energy and i'll look at that as uh, venus and the star here it would be in the position of mars i'd like to see it so if they're a leo And their Venus energy. You know, with the hangman, that does feel like Virgo. That would work with um, that would work with Leo. It's not going to make it to Pisces. <laughs> um, and with the star here, you're going to have to have air energy. I'm going to see it. Gonna have Mars, Mars and Libra, Venus and uh, Virgo, and Mars and Libra for this person, and their Mercury also in Virgo um, for a Leo persona. Um, so they may come across really very much, I think, like a Leo, but I think as you get to know them. Um, they're also genuinely charming. Um, they're someone that will uh, probably just prefer to lift someone up as to keep them down. You know, they're, they are probably jovial and they might uh, stand out. Uh, but I think they're, it's in a way it's going to be very kind of positive and like you'll want to listen to them and you will find them to be charming. You know, and you will see that they actually are uh, like as a leader and they may well express this energy of like a leader. like. Kind of wherever they go, it's like people tend to just sort of, I've seen this with Leos before, uh, it's effortless, it's just the energy of it, but they just, people tend to see that they're, they're the ones that can lead, they have that energy, and they'll stop for just a second and let them talk, and then they, that's how they kind of take control, and then and so they go for a while, and other people go, oh yeah, it makes sense, and uh, they end up being the ones that have followed. It's because people naturally take a tick to listen to them. Um, so, in terms of sex, it'd be like, I can't imagine they'd be someone that have a lot of relationships because they're probably pretty relationship oriented and they, they're they gonna put a lot of effort into their relationship. And I don't uh, see them as being particularly flighty, so they might have not have a terrible lot of sexual experience, you know, because they may have tended to have uh, abstinence and then longer term relationships, would be my guess for like the sexual history. Um, and they'd very much be about romance and about uh, kind of the other, you know, a very thoughtful uh, lover um, and a very thoughtful uh, sexual partner, you know. Someone will never forget uh, birthdays <laughs> and, and will basically aim to please. This is in their core values and lifestyle. The strength card, the again, and the empress card, Taurus and abundance. So, 
often see this column, you know, with, with the core values and lifestyle relating to the intellect here. And I'm going to try T. Um, the king of wands and strength. I mean, Leo, Leo, Leo. Um, so there's something they do uh, with their leader. That, that's going to be their story, too, in terms of work. Um, and probably with the king of wands and the strain, like they're probably uh, either like a leader in their field, outstanding in their field, very most likely entrepreneurial. So they're, they are their field, they are their business type of deal. And probably successful because they're the kind of person, that's where they're going to put their energy. They're kind of the same way about the relationship they probably approach their work, you know. With this dedication, humbleness, balance, a desire to please, please the other, how does other people feel, um, what do other people need. Um, you see that the Libra here, Mars, is next to, uh, uh, represented by Venus, Taurus here. So Venus energy, which is also seventh house Libra, wanting to please, being abundant. Um, so it might speak to something, whatever they do uh, in terms of their business. Um, they may do something that has to do uh, with the house, with luxury items, with uh, these kind of things. <coughs> something that has to do with comfort or beauty or art with the Empress here. So let me know what you think of this, guys. It's a predictive read sometime this month. If this person pops up, I want you to get back to me and say, hey, Dave. And let me know and do appreciate a like comments are very welcome and uh, we'll try to comment back and uh, do subscribe if you haven't uh, could use to help